Hello everyone, welcome to video 32 of chapter 3. We start this video with a proposition. This is uh, 2. We um, will give a number to these definitions, uh, propositions and theorems and lemma in, in this topic of convexity. Okay, So proposition 2 as we have observed in one of our example, and this is a more general um, statement, it says that the intersection of any collection of convex sets is also a convex set. Okay, let's take a look at how to prove this. Now, um, we need an index, we call it I. And uh, capital I is the set for indexes. Okay, and then we have SI, S indexed. So there's a collection of uh, sets SI for each I. This set and all the elements in this set is convex. Okay, so and then we want to show that let's call capital S to be the intersection of all these SIs. We want to show this is also convex. So this just to fix the notation. Okay, so we will use the definition of the convexity. Let's pick two elements. We call it X and Y and they are both in the set S. Okay, what does it mean? Well, this means X and Y are both elements of the set, capital S. Now recall, S is the intersection of all these SIs. So if an element is in the intersection of all these SIs, then X will lie in SI and Y would lie in SI for every I. Now we use the assumption that SIs are all convex. Since all of these SIs are convex, this means I can pick a T between 0 and 1. I can make a convex combination of these two numbers. Then this convex combination will lie in SI for every I, because this argument for holds for any fixed I. Okay, so if this element lies in every SI for all I, that means this element lies in the intersection of all of them, which is capital S. Okay, so what have we proved is that if X and Y is in capital S, then any convex combination of them is also in capital X, S. So that's precisely the definition of S is being convex. Okay, I just want to throw it out there that this result would be useful um, later for the linear programming problem. Okay, so let's consider linear programming problem. We consider this in standard form because we have learned that any linear programming problem can all be written in standard form. Okay, so we have the first theorem here, which has number three here, according to our num uh, laboring. Theorem three, say, the theorem says, the feasible region S of any linear programming is a convex set. Okay, so now you see the convexity coming in. Okay, so how do we prove this? Okay, let's look at the proof. So we know that linear programming problem, what is the feasible region? Well, it's the region where all the constraints must be satisfied, right? So all the constraints must hold, then this means S would be the intersection of uh, several constraints. I mean, as many constraints as you have in your problem. Now you see 
proposition two comes very handy, because there we have shown that the intersection of a convex set remains convex. So here we have intersections of all these constraints. If we can show that each of these linear constraints forms a convex set, then we can invoke proposition number two, and we're done. Okay, now let's take a general form of the constraint. Let's say it's a linear constraint, so the constraint is a some a1, a2 coefficient times x equal to a constant b. This is a general form. And we would like to show that it forms a convex set. Okay, so how do you prove this? Well, we need to go back to the definition, right? So let's pick two points in the set. Let's call them x bar and x tilde. They both satisfy the constraint, which we labeled as star. So um, in detail, what does it mean? That means uh, x bar satisfies that constraint, and so does x tilde. You write out in all elements. We now make a convex combination, and we call this x hat. is a convex combination of x bar and x tilde in this form, t between 0 and 1. Okay, If you do that, then you know each element in this x hat is also a convex combination of the corresponding elements in those two. So we have this form and it holds for all indexes. So it remains to show that this convex combination is also in the set. What does it mean is that it also satisfies the constraint star. So let's do the computation. So we put this new point x hat into the equation of the constraint, the left hand side of it, and then let's work out the details. So we know each component x hat of i is this form, so let's plug it in for x hat 1. Then just have index 1 here, a linear combination, and we add all the terms, and then we have the last one where the index is n. It's the same, but just changing the index. Okay, and then now we um, look at the term with the coefficient 1 minus t. And we're going to collect that. So 1 minus t is the first one in each of these terms that we dot 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 did. So we have 1 minus t, and then for the first one I get a1 x1 bar, and then at a2 x2 bar, all the way to the last one a n x n bar, which is here. Okay, and we do the same thing for the terms containing t. We take the common t out, and then we get a1, x1 tilde as the first term, and dot dot all the way to the last term, a n, and x tilde n. Okay, now we see that what's in this bracket here is exactly the left hand side here, and we know that equals b. So this bracket equals b, and then this bracket is exactly here, and also equals b. So if this is 1 minus t, b plus t, b, negative t cancels negative t, I get b. So the constraint is satisfied for x hat. OK, so we see that x hat satisfies the constraint. Therefore, the set of that single constraint is a convex set, and the feasible region is the intersection of uh, all the constraints. Each of them is convex, and therefore S is also convex. Okay, so we have shown that the um, feasible region is convex. Let's look at something a bit broader, the optimality region. This is theorem 4. So the optimality region, what is it? Well, it is the region 
where the minimum value is attained. Okay? It might be one point, it might be a set. One point is a set. Okay? So this region is a convex set. Okay? Let's see how we can prove this. Now, um, with the theorem 3 and uh, the proposition 2, the proof for this one is actually very simple. We just invoke the previous result. So this follows from theorem 3. Since what is the difference between the optimality region and the set S? Well, the only difference is we added one kind of a constraint or equation that is the objective function equal to the optimal value, right? This is an equal sign and this is also a linear equation. And we have shown that such an equation is convex and then and you intersect with one more convex set in it and the result is still a convex set by proposition 2. Okay. Okay, so now we have shown that the feasible solution set is convex and the optimality region is also convex. Okay, so that's all for this video and uh, I'll see you next time.